Welcome back to Marvel Maniac and MCU After Show. This is your host, Eric Cicada, a.k.a. Mr. Honest. It's my pleasure to be back here with you today. It has been a week since the grand finale of Marvel's What If. What did you process this week in terms of everything that happened? Are you losing your mind? I mean, I'm asking you questions that you cannot answer out loud, first off, so I apologize. I'm not the watcher. You cannot break the fourth wall and turn around and talk to me like him. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, but it has been kind of um, a mixed reactions for me on Twitter and Instagram and from friends. Uh, so I really am interested in your thoughts. So you can tweet us at Marvel Maniac Pod. We are on Instagram, t- uh, Twitter, and TikTok. So give us all give us all your thoughts on any of those platforms. And Marvel Maniac Pod at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts. You might hear them on the show. So today's going to be a little bit of a roundup. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what if. Uh, I want to really go into the Eternals trailer t- that, that just came out because Eternals is weeks away from coming out. And I want to talk about what I want to cover on this podcast over the next few months in between the big events, in between the shows and the movies. What can we talk about? What can we discuss? And I got a lot of really fun ideas. It's not like we have lack of content to talk about. It's not like there is an underwhelming amount of amazing Marvel material. Actually, it's just so amazing to me that I only started at WandaVision and on the show. I have, for those that are just joining us, I have seen every bit of the MCUs in theaters since Iron Man. And it... You know, it's blown me away. I, the only one I actually haven't seen is The Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton. And I love that the multiverse exists now because that validates Ed Norton Hulk a lot. It's just another off kill, off version of the Hulk. Uh, Mark Ruffalo's version exists. I would like them to maybe make a deep, deep, deep fake version of uh, Mark Ruffalo Hulk over Ed Norton Hulk just so we get that uh, in canon. Um, I'm so sorry, Ed Norton. I think you're a great actor. I, I have nothing against you whatsoever. I loved you in that Incredible Hulk movie. I did. I was, you know what? I think I was actually really, really, to be honest, I was hurt uh, at the moment that I found out Edward Norton wasn't going to be in the Avengers as Hulk. Think about it. Like, I really wanted, when who didn't, that continuity. That continuity was so important and the fact that it could have happened and it it didn't because of the actor not because of the studio it was it was it it made me like it made me hulk and you know the the fact that the movie worked out the way it did how fantastic it was and that ruffalo pulled through it makes that movie that much better and that for me is why i don't really count the um, I don't really count the Edward, Edward Norton Hulk too much. And I haven't until this Marvel's What If because they they added into the um, What If the Earth lost lost its greatest heroes episode episode three, and then we get to see scenes from it there. And you know you are reminded. I am reminded of some of the great parts of that movie. And General Ross is in that movie, and it almost seems to me that I've been kind of missing out on some of the finer parts of that movie and ed norton is a great actor so i think i've kind of written off that movie maybe a little bit too much the original um incredible hulk of the mcu and maybe we can revisit that at some point that's not something i'm looking to do immediately unless there's a diehard incredible hulk fan that is like stand up now (laughs) um email us you you heard the socials uh, i for forever hold your peace or you know like it might be a couple weeks or months i'm not dying to get to this thing i don't, I don't know if anyone else is either there's a lot of cool stuff coming up <laughs> we're freeform talking today here at marvel maniac because next week or in the next few days you may get it an after after show for Marvel's What If. You didn't get one for Loki. And that, like I said, there's th- things that happen in my personal life that will affect the show. It just happens to everyone. Unfortunately, Loki was one of those things where I couldn't do the after after show with my friends like I did for the other series. And unfortunately, Loki, um, wasn't everyone's favorite of the three of the three shows, uh, before What If, but 
I love Loki. I really wish we had an after after show for that. So I'd like to maybe talk a little bit about that while we do talk about what if, but if we don't get to that, um, that's fine. We're going to talk a lot with my good friends, Dustin Baker and TJ Gluey. They were on our after after shows for WandaVision and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about the whole series, and I know their views on a lot of the show uh, of what if. Um, they're they're both vary. They both vary from each other and mine. So it will be fun to hear their differing views, and we can compare them and maybe argue a little bit. <laughs> uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. And I also like to rub the Thanos, all the Thanos, in the, both of their faces, <laughs> in the nicest way possible. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So be on the lookout for that. The What If After After Show. This could come to your podcast devices as late as next Wednesday, the usual day you get your podcast, or as early as the day after tomorrow. But I'm just going to be safe and say the after after show is most likely going to come a week from Wednesday, a week from today. And with that being said, we have a lot to talk about in the coming weeks slash months um, leading up to the premiere of Hawkeye on December 24th and the end of the year release of Spider-Man No Way Home. On December 17th, 2021. This means, if this is correct, if I'm correct, um, Hawkeye six episodes, right? Which means Hawkeye will end on December 29th, right? December 29th. Uh, On December 17th, we will have been... It would have been after Hawkeye episode four. So we, we will, it will be similar to when we went to go see Loki and it was the episode where we, it was a big episode. And then we went to go see Black Widow. It's like, what a time to be alive. <laughs> um, how exciting is that? I'm just like, got the, ch- I have the chills because I'm going that week. I, I can very specifically remember the excitement. And that's what it's all about as a Marvel fan. And being able to say that the cinematic universe that you're invested in is almost working like clockwork now. So let's say next week we'll have our What If After After show on October 20th. Then the week after, October 27th, it's Halloween. We're getting spooky. I feel like we should watch Venom. A, It's an MCU after show, and I just... If Spider-Man's coming, um, with, let's watch a movie about Venom. Let's, I just think we should watch Venom. I've heard lots of people have told me there's reason to watch Venom. That's all I'll say. There's no spoilers here on the show. And that being said, that's all I will say. I, I, I have reason to believe this podcast has the right to watch Venom. <laughs> and it is. it should be integrated and important to watch Venom. And it's a relevant new movie-ish to watch. Whether it be, I, want, I have to watch it now. <laughs> I've never seen it. And we're going to watch Venom. And following week, the 3rd of November, we will watch Venom, Let There Be Carnage. The following Friday after that, we have Eternals, the release. It's a premiere. Um, Most people will be going to see it that Thursday, the 4th. A lot of people get in that midnight premiere, which usually ends up being a 7 o'clock show these days because nobody goes to midnight premieres and the theaters know that and they just sell in quotes midnight premieres <laughs> to like 7 p- I don't know why they do that I'm not mad it's a fine and so you know this this uh, this schedule is a little subject to change I will keep you updated on it this is just a vague outline of what I'd like to do in between shows and trying to keep you guys updated and the following week on November 11th, I figured we have a little bit of in-between time. Well, let's go to Iron Man 3. Let's jump into Phase 2 of our watching of the MCU. We're going to keep going through those on these in-between times of shows and movies. And there's not well, there's not uh, another thing to cover because there's not going to be a lot of that. You'll see. The next week, we have Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Another amazing, iconic movie. The first movie that the Russo brothers, the directors of Infinity War and Endgame, my favorites uh, of the entire Infinity Saga, they uh, they directed this one, and that is so. F- that is the final week before Hawkeye, uh, November twenty fourth, the premiere of Hawkeye, and 
That is when we are on a roll. For six weeks straight, we will be discussing Hawkeye. And in between that, during that show, like I said, we have Spider-Man, the premiere on December 17th. Just to keep your marvelous minds in, in just in order, remember uh, what's coming here. And there's also more to come. There's more to come uh, next year. As far as Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings go, I, I just need to admit, I really have gotten in my head about doing reviews and going to the movie, coming back, telling you how I feel. And let's just see if how I do with Eternals. Uh, I'm going to really try and do it with Eternals. I am. Like I did with Black Widow, but better. I'm going to try and do it better. And my idea with that is I'm going to maybe try and see it multiple times if I have to or can. Uh... I I don't see anywhere seeing Chang Chi any I don't see anywhere else playing Chang Chi uh, near me anymore. So I'm gonna have to wait till it comes back to Disney Plus. And this is who I am. I'm a human being that has anxiety who gets in their head. And uh, Chang Chi came out in a very kind of chaotic time for me. And uh, I have a lot of sadness about not being able to put up an instant review about it. But it is a movie that I really love seeing in theaters. And I'll just say a couple things instantly off the top of my head um, right here that uh, I thought the Ten Rings were utilized beautifully. I didn't, I didn't imagine um, how they would be utilized. I'm really excited about the lore that it brings to the MCU the movie Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and the new characters, and uh, I'm really excited to actually really get down and talk about this movie with you, and um, when I talk about a new series like this, it's just got to be like, it's got to be right, and that, that's that's really it, uh, similar to how I'm get, getting down with What If, or any Loki episode, it's just, I really want it to be a breakdown and an after show uh, like no other. And in my mind, <laughs> I'll go back and listen to some of these things. And I'm just like, I, I really do sound silly when I'm, when I'm talking about the episodes or going through them because um, you can hear like so the episodes playing in my headphones. And I'm like describing to you what's happening as I'm seeing them. And, you know, I'm so into the episode and it's like, I'm kind of like smiling as I'm listening back. Cause and I'm like, you know what? That's me. My happy. That's me. My happiest. It's me. My happy place. And, uh, I'm excited to share that with the world. So a month ago, Eternals released what was said to be its final trailer. And that was not true. That was not true. Because today, I'm sorry, yesterday, it's not today anymore. Marvel returned with the trailer, returned with a new trailer for Eternals. And this has some new cuts, uh, a couple new shots, and references to the greater MCU as a whole. Now, the trailer starts off, it says, We're Eternals. For 7,000 years, we've protected humans from the Deviants. And we get this epic shot of the Eternals on the beach, all standing next to each other. Um, I posted a GIF of this in reaction to somebody's tweet saying, I don't think film Twitter is ready for the Eternals. Um, I, you know, I almost like, didn't know what they were... Like, like, I think they were saying, like, there's some suppressed... like. There's people like thinking that like they're, it's not going to work. The movie's just not going to work. Um, I don't know what they I don't know what they mean about that. Like, why don't you think this movie's going to work? This movie looks fantastic. Um, who are those doubters? Get out of here. Marvel's ready. Look at this movie's going. This movie's amping up. Uh, two and a half hours is the um, supposed and rumored runtime, and I'm just fine with that. I'm willing to the, with a big cast like this. We need to learn every character. We need we need we need a good story. So this is a giant ship coming in over the ocean, and I guess she says, for 7,000 years, we protected humans from the deviants again, and we get to see Kumail Nanjiani's character blast away this giant, what I'm guessing, de I'm guessing deviant is uh, in the face with, I think it's a gun. Then we get John... I was going to say Jon Snow, Kit Harrington, who will be playing a hero later on in Marvel, but I'm not going to talk about that yet because we don't need to confuse anything. Um, he's asking, you probably know him from Game of Thrones, which might confuse you a little bit because another guy from Game of Thrones is in this. <laughs> um, he says, why didn't you help fight Thanos or any other war um, or all the other terrible things throughout history? And um, Cersei replies, we were, instructed, we were instructed not to interfere until now. So it seems that like the second snap from 
Hulk that brought everyone back was the thing that brought the Eternals back, um, is my guess, is what really a lot of people's guesses are at this point from, you know, all the theories and theory videos and Reddits I've been on, the hive mind of the internet. Yeah, the second snap brought more than just the people of Earth back and the universe. And we get just some pretty big shots of all of the Eternals gathering, um, pulling out their knives, their weapons. Um, you know, I don't know all the names of all the actors. Um, one of them says Eternals Assemble. That's the guy from Game of Thrones. He was Rob Stark on Game of Thrones. I love him. He's fantastic. I love Angelina Jolie. I will say the things that they wrapped, like the golden armor that they wrap themselves around in the trailer it reminds me a lot of the golden armor that dr strange supreme wraps the guardians of the multiverse around like is it that same you know guardian eternal energy that dr strange can conjure when you when you become that enlightened that powerful um godlike energy i don't know it's really hard to narrate this trailer. I mean, it's a, it's going to be hard to, narrate, to honestly tell you about this movie when I, after I've seen it because there's so many characters. I'm not going to learn their name, all their names. This planet, these people have changed all of us. There's just so much going on in the trailers. It's like all great Marvel trailers. You don't know what the heck the movie's about. There's volcanoes exploding. Um, a little kid asks Angelina Jolie what's her superpower, and she just stabs a big old or stabs an orange with her big old golden talon. <laughs> it's just you have no idea what this movie's about. I think it's really interesting that they couldn't come around to help, and they've been around this whole time. Where have they been? <laughs> Where have they been watching from? What what have they been doing? Living among us, it seems, are they, it's invincible and mortal. They've had to watch the Battle of New York. They've had to watch Ultron. They've had to watch Thanos. Were they snapped? Were they able to be snapped? Um, so many questions, and really... Are we going to see direct answers and ramifications this uh, in this movie to that? Or are we just going to hear about it? Seeing and hearing is much different. If we get to see a montage, which uh, Marvel's pretty good at, uh, if, if they can do that right, of the Eternals having to stand by and watch on direction from the greater beings, um, the Celestials, who are pretty much who they have to answer to the celestials if we have to if we have to see them stand by and watch everything like in the mcu canon that we've seen kind of happen and them not help even like for maybe like the thor dark world like and keep keep adding stuff to make that movie better you know uh, um you know that might really tie a knot and a bow around this thing and what these trailers are kind of telling us is the movie wants i mean they at least at least the people at Disney and the movie trailers want you to know that these are in the same universe as the Avengers. Uh, I, I'd like to believe and love to believe that those who, if they're bringing you in on the Avengers um, dime, that they're going to homage the Avengers enough to not just say Eternals assemble in the trailer and um, not show you any bit of, you know, reciprocation in my opinion uh, that would be kind of a low blow uh, because they they're really uh, marketing avengers now they're almost going to the extreme to market avengers alongside this to use the avengers to bring people into the eternals they want people to know that this is your new avengers they're, they, they we want they want to utilize I, I don't know um if if that's what they're going for but and i don't hate that but i think that that's maybe what the, some of the people that aren't liking the movie that maybe that's what they're not liking um but i i, I love the i love the look of this group uh i think they're really charming and i think this movie's just gonna kick ass i, I love the group that we're assembling for phase four Thank you for joining me today on this short but sweet episode. We have launched a Patreon page. It would be wonderful if you joined us there. Patreon.com slash Marvel Maniac. You join us there and we give you a little bit of perk, a little bit of love back. Um, we don't ask much. It's just $5 a month and you get one bonus clip a week and you'll get a little Loki sticker from our Loki season of Marvel, Marvel Maniac. And it's just a couple of my personalized Loki variants that I picked out uh, in one nice little picture.
metamorphic maniac form. Don't tell Tom Hiddleston he didn't say it was okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, please uh, don't don't feel obligated to do this, but it does help the show, and it's probably the best way to help. So there is a link into the description, and you can always just go to patreon.com slash marvelmaniac, you wonderful, humble human beings. Um, it will be wonderful to see you next week when we have our after after show for Marvel's What If and to the future forward in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm beyond excited to keep talking Marvel with you. This is your host, Eric Cicada, a.k.a. Mr. Honest. Make sure you get us on at Marvel Maniac Pod on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, MarvelManiacPod at gmail.com, and Patreon, www.patreon.com slash Maniac. You are amazing, and thank you again for being here. I will see you next week. Until then, Avengers, disassemble.